What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Jonas. This is episode 37 and yes it's been a little while since we've last uh, dropped a podcast. Um, WrestleMania um, 35, the review of WrestleMania 35 was our last one which was uh, over a week ago now. And if you haven't heard that one, you can catch that in the archives. And that was uh, with guest hosts um, Half Decent and uh, Heather, um, who are kind of close wrestling friends of mine. And I thought it was a pretty good episode. And um, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. We spoke for about an hour and 40 minutes on all 16 matches, including the pre-show. Um, we, we kind of spoke about uh, our thoughts and our feelings for each of the individual matches. And it was a really uh, enjoyable podcast. Uh, go out of your way and listen to that if you haven't done so already. Um, I actually thought wrestling Mania 35 was a bit of a success to be honest with you, I really enjoyed it um, I rated it uh, uh, 7.5 out of 10, so that, that's, that's pretty good to be honest with you, um, also in the archives episode 35, which is our NXT TakeOver New York episode which uh, I reviewed with Matt Bayless, now that was another fun episode from an extraordinary show, one of the best um, if not the best NXT TakeOvers um, ever uh, so that's also in the archives. Go out and listen to that. You can catch all of my previous episodes of Wrestling with Jonas um, on any major podcast platform. You can catch it pretty much wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Podbean, Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, uh, YouTube. So it's out there. Go out and listen to them. Um, so, so thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're kind of relatively back to normal. Although I do want to kind of tell you about a few changes that uh, we have in store for the Wrestling With Jonas podcasts um, and episodes going forward. Uh, so this is episode 37 and today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the superstar, superstar shake-up, uh, Sasha Banks and her, her behaviour and her kind of uh, fr- frustrations, letting her feelings known um, kind of uh, out on the internet and uh, she's not afraid to kind of let her feelings known to her colleagues as well. We'll talk more about Sasha in a minute and then we're going to be doing our usual weekly review of NXT and NXT UK from, uh, from last night, the 17th of April. Let's throw in a couple of plugs first of all though, um, just so you know where to kind of reach us on social media. We are out there on uh, uh, all social media platforms. Twitter first of all, go to Twitter, um, look for at withjohnners underscore pod. That's at withjohnners underscore pod. On Instagram, instagram.com forward slash wrestling with Johnners. And you can uh, uh, search for our Facebook group as well, which we uh, kind of update with uh, news and articles and uh, yeah, have a little bit of fun on the Facebook group as well. Just search wrestling with Johnners. So the, the change that I alluded to earlier on uh, relates to kind of, I, I want to do um, shorter episodes. We have been going well over the hour. It's uh, a lot of work, a lot of prep time, a lot of talking um, and uh, a lot of podcasts for you guys to kind of listen to in one chunk. So I want to make it a bit more manageable. When I started this podcast, um, you know, back last year and even early, the first few months of this year, the episodes were going, you know, 30 40 45 minutes which is a lot more manageable and that's kind of the time limit that i want to keep to um so instead of trying to fit everything into one episode i'm going to try and split it into chunks um i also want to uh, kind of raise uh, my youtube audience and get some more listeners on youtube with some kind of new and exclusive content so um, my, my thought process is to kind of split what I would normally do over one episode into two uh, cover half of it on the kind of podcast and then half of it in a, a YouTube exclusive episode which will be going up um, you know a, a couple of days after the standard podcast episode and it will have kind of video footage of me presenting the episode. Um, and uh, yeah, so it will be slightly different to what I've done on YouTube before with regards to kind of the static um, artwork um, and me kind of talking over it. There'll still be that for the standard podcast episodes, um, but this new YouTube show is going to be called The Wrestling Experience. Now, I know that we've kind of um, had a laugh about uh, uh, the War Radios being named The Viking Experience this week uh, due to their call up on Monday Night Raw, um, but uh, the wrestling experience I thought fits well. Um, but uh, the name might change. Uh, let us know what you think about that. But that will be um, an exclusive, exclusive content for the YouTube listeners. And hopefully, with kind of the video footage there, it will help to drive up the the kind of viewership of um, of my YouTube videos and hopefully help to increase the, the 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 word and the popularity of what I do through the standard podcast and kind of hopefully between the two of them 
being driven uh, by YouTube. Hopefully um, we can kind of get the, the podcast uh, listened to by more people as well. So that's the plan. That is the plan. Uh, the first episode of the Wrestling Experience will drop this weekend. Uh, so Saturday afternoon UK time. And it's going to be looking at the first two episodes of uh, The World to Collide, WWE World to Collide, that was filmed over WrestleMania weekend at Access. And uh, the first two episodes will be looking at uh, um, NXT, current NXT stars versus NXT alumni. So those who are currently up on the main roster uh, wrestling for either Raw or SmackDown who are kind of wrestling current NXT stars. So NXT stars versus NXT alumni. And the second episode, which aired last night, will be uh, Cruiserweights collide and lots of really top matches there to look forward to, including uh, Jordan Devlin versus uh, Tazawa, Tyler Bates versus the Brian Kendrick, and quite an intriguing uh, triple threat match uh, pitting uh, Albert Hardy Jr., formerly um, ACH on the Indies, versus Grand Metalik versus Ligero. So that should be a really, really cool match. And I'll be covering, um, like I say, those two episodes of Worlds Collide on uh, the first episode of the Wrestling Experience on YouTube this coming Saturday, um, along with a, a little look at some of the kind of backstage stories that uh, has been going out there um, or, or, or on the rumour mill regarding some uh, backstage behaviour behind the scenes at WrestleMania and also the uh, the, the wrestlers that um, appear to be um, quite free and willing to behave the way um, they feel without any kind of repercussions or any kind of fear for, for their position and uh, the, the number of wrestlers that have been kind of requesting their release from the WWE over recent uh, days and weeks um, obviously uh, you know we'll talk a little bit about the AEW impact with all of that as well um, but um, f- one of the first things I want to cover on this episode of Wrestling with Jonas is Sasha Banks now she's been a bit of a, a bit of a, a an anomaly lately she has been um, kind of behaving in a certain way um, this kind of uh, Chris crosses into my YouTube episode talking about backstage behaviour um, and, and I want to talk about Sasha Banks in particular on this episode with regards to her behaviour um, since WrestleMania really so the boss and her connection they were the first ever WWE Women's Tag Team Champions um, Sasha Banks and Bayley um, the boss and her connections but they were told only hours before their match in the four-way at WrestleMania. Uh, now, it was against the Iconics. It was against Nia Jax and Bayley. Uh, Nia Jax and Tamina, my apologies. And it was against Beth Phoenix and Natalia. So, a four-way for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. And they were told just hours before their match uh, at the MetLife Stadium that they were going to be losing their championships um, at WrestleMania. Now, the match was okay. Um, but... Um, after the match, it was reported that Sasha and Bailey were visibly unhappy backstage after the match um, at WrestleMania and were seen kind of lying on the floor um, in the backstage area. And I think I have heard reports that they were kind of lying on the floor either in the hotel room or outside the hotel room um, later on that evening. Um, after the match as a sign of their frustration of losing the title so soon after winning the championship. So I think they'd only held the women's tag team championships for 49 days before they lost. So there were some reports that they were unhappy. Um, well, obviously that they were unhappy that they lost the championships at all. Uh, they were unhappy that they lost the championships to the Iconics, um, who they you know supposedly do not rate. Um, and uh, they were unhappy that uh, because they were planning to be fighting champions they had told um you know the wwe universe and the nxt audience over in full sale that they were prepared to defend their championships wherever they went they were prepared to defend the championships on raw they were prepared to defend their championships on smackdown and even on nxt so they were going to be fighting champions and of course we don't have separate tag team uh, women's tag team uh, belts for nxt raw and, and smackdown so it'll be kind of one uh, lot of champions you know potentially um, to cover all three brands and that was kind of how they uh, said you know they sold it to us and that's how they said they were going to you know defend their champions they were they were going to be fighting champions 
and then you know they were quite excited um, by that prospect of being fighting champions on all three brands and I think the fans thought that that was uh, quite a neat concept as well um, especially having two you know main roster talents such as Bailey and Sasha Banks defending their championships on you know on on NXT uh, you know could they potentially pop up on NXT UK you don't know but that's kind of the way that they were or selling it to us um, and they were obviously under the impression that that was the, the plan as well um, it was also reported uh, that that they were this is kind of hot off the press but they, it was reported they were promised that they were going to be defending their tag team championships uh, in Saudi Arabia as well against Beth Phoenix and Natalia now of course um WWE have never presented a women's match on any of their Saudi Arabia shows before because of the culture out there um, and uh, uh, they were promised that uh, the first time ever uh, there will be women on the card Sasha and Bailey would be defending their WWE women's tag team titles against Beth Phoenix and Natalia um, and it will be the first time that any women have been um, able to compete on any of the wrestling shows that WWE have put on in Saudi Arabia so it will be kind of a history making um history making match and they were promised that they would be champions um, through to that uh, um, show and would be defending their titles on Saudi Arabia so I don't know how true that is um, but that is kind of what what's been reported very recently with regards to Sasha Banks she did go on to Snapchat and put some uh, some comments on there on her Snapchat to all of her millions of followers um, at saying hashtag feeling cute might quit my job later today um, IDK I think that stands for I don't know um, but uh, yeah so she, she kind of wasn't um, you know worried about being vocal about her frustrations and how unhappy she was at the situation and I think that a lot of it possibly stems from how she's been treated on the main roster um, she was you know massively over on NXT she had uh, match of the year uh, with Bailey um, at NXT Brooklyn 1 back in 2015 you may remember that amazing show stealing match for the NXT Women's Championship where Bailey did actually beat Sasha Banks in that incredible match and it was voted match of the year um, in uh, kind of many people's books that year and certainly mine um, but if you look at Sasha Banks's championship record uh, of course, she was the the, the women's uh, tag team champion and lost the title to to Bailey. She was only won that championship at one time. They did have that kind of follow up match, which was the, the thirty minute Iron Man match on NXT Takeover Respect, which uh, um, Sasha Banks uh, did lose, but in an incredible match that didn't quite rival their match in Brooklyn, but nonetheless was very good. Sasha Banks is four time uh, WWE Women's Champion or Raw Women's Champion four times. She lost um, lost the championship um, four times in very, very quick succession. I don't think she successfully defended any of those four championships um, once on any subsequent pay-per-view after winning the title. She lost um, three of her four Raw Women's Championships to Charlotte and the other one to Alexa Bliss. And uh, as I just rightly said, she didn't successfully defend her Raw Women's Championship once on any subsequent pay-per-view after winning the, the you know any of those four uh, raw women's championships uh, and then of course uh, they were able to successfully defend their WWE women's tag team titles um to uh, you know at Fastlane the pay-per-view just before WrestleMania in March uh, against Nia Jax and Tamina um, and that's you know possibly the only time um, since coming up onto the main roster that Sasha Banks has been able to successfully defend any of her championships um, but um, yeah a lot of frustration spilling out from Sasha Banks in her behavior afterwards now to kind of counter that the, the, we have seen photos of uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks um, kind of congratulating and, and hugging uh, the Iconics uh, with their newly won championships in hand backstage behind the scenes at WrestleMania um, and they all seemed kind of very happy for one another and uh, I'm, I'm sure 
Sasha Banks and Bailey were, you know, visibly upset after the match. If you watched them, um, with them sat kind of um, outside of the ring with their hands in their heads, um, appearing to be emotionally upset at losing the championships. And obviously, there's a million and one things that's possibly going around in their heads um, after losing such a, uh, you know, such a such a match in such a, a big show such as WrestleMania. And uh, but you know, in the photo that I've seen, they appear to be kind of happy for the iconics. And uh, I think you know, wrestlers need to understand that it that it is a work. It's a form of entertainment. You know, kayfabe is is long but dead. Certainly in the WWE um, locker room, anyway. And uh, yeah, I, I I don't quite know where I stand on this because you know when you read all the Facebook posts and all the Twitter posts about Sasha Banks and her behaviour. I mean. A couple of days after WrestleMania, she was meant to have appeared on the Wendy Williams show, uh, talk show in America, and she kind of um, she, she she no showed at short notice, giving the producers virtually no notice, um, and certainly not enough notice for them to be able to get a replacement. Um, so that was kind of one. Um, bit of news that was circulating following WrestleMania that Sasha Banks was unhappy. Then, of course, the Snapchat where she said, you know, uh, feeling cute, might quit my job today. Um, And then she's refused to show up to work this week. Um, No show in Raw and SmackDown. So I would say, you know, in the balance of things, yes, you know, she's her behaviour could be better um, and she could be handling things a lot more professional um, at this day and age. Like I say, kayfabe is dead. Yes, she may have been promised this, that, the other, but um, she's been in the WWE for a long time now, um, and she was in uh, developmental in NXT for a couple of years. She's been on the main roster for uh, four years now, uh, possibly you know heading into the fifth year now being on the main roster, so she knows what it's all about. Um, and uh, yes, There might be a lot of frustration there with regards to her previous championships being uh, short-lived and uh, whatever promises might have been given to her and Bailey about the women's tag team championships um, haven't been delivered. Um, But it is what it is. Everybody needs to remain professional. Everybody needs to know that they, you know, are part of a uh, part of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that, um, you know, if the management team believed that somebody you know, needs to lose the championship or to win a championship, that that's part of the plan and that's the, the picture that everybody needs to stick to and play their part in and they are part of a bigger picture. So I think that, you know, a lot of kind of people out there are saying that she's uh, behaving poorly, uh, believe, behaving, you know, rather uh, childish about, um, you know, losing the championship, especially not showing up to the uh, you know, Raw and SmackDown and the, the, the chat show with Wendy Williams. Um, and... She's uh, unfollowed um, uh, WWE apparently on her Twitter and started following AEW, which is a sign that she's definitely on her way out. Apparently she's um, asked for her release after WrestleMania. So that's kind of something else that could once again contradict you know, the photos that we've seen. There seems to be so much contradictory stuff, but I think on the balance of things, you know, it certainly looks like Sasha Banks hasn't handled the situation very professionally at all, and um, that, uh, yeah, maybe the WWE are better off without her, to be honest with you. When you look at the talent pool they have in the women's roster, um, you've got, you know, Bailey, who I rate much higher than Sasha Banks to start off with. But when you look at, you know, the, the, the single situation in the women's division, uh, Becky Two Bounce, the man, Becky Lynch, uh, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, um, you know, you, you've got you got three amazing wrestlers there straight away. Um, you, you know, you've got you've got five or six really decent wrestlers, including Bailey, um, and those that are coming up through from NXT, NXT UK with the likes of Shayna Baszler. Um, Kyrie Sane, Io Shirai, kind of on the on the periphery, um, yeah, Tony Storm, Viper, Kaylee Ray, Rhea Ripley, so many names there that are kind of bubbling under the surface that can take Sasha Banks's place in a heartbeat, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I know that she's given, um, you know, WWE have given her two weeks to kind of think about um, the situation. To potentially give her the opportunity to to come back and to you know not necessarily start off where uh, start again where she left off, but um, 
to hopefully kind of make amends and to reconsider her, uh, you know, uh, her request to be let out of her contract. So it would be interesting to see what happens. Um, but uh, Banks has told WWE management that she weren't going to be on either Raw or SmackDown this week until they were able to convince her otherwise. So, um, I don't know, things aren't looking uh, gr- great there as far as the whole Sasha Banks picture. Um, do you believe that she's justified to behave the way she has done? Um, is she being selfish or too demanding? Uh, Bailey has now um, been drafted to SmackDown, and uh, she was paired up with Naomi on this week's edition um, in a match against the Iconics. Um, but l- let's talk about the Superstar Shakeup. Um, so some of the kind of uh, movers and shakers between the two brands on Raw, for example, you've got AJ Styles that uh, has made his uh, long-awaited return to uh, Raw when he first came up onto the main roster back in 2016, or when he first came to WWE back in 2016. Um, he was on Raw for a while, um, only for a short while, a few months uh, before he moved over onto SmackDown, where he was a, a two-time SmackDown champion. Some quite lengthy reigns there, um, but I think he is a main player and deserves to be um, on Raw, where he can certainly kind of um, have some great matches uh, with the likes of you know, potentially Ricochet or Alistair Black. Um, they've been floating between Raw and SmackDown since their call-up back in February. Um, it looks like they are going to be mainstays of the Raw brand now. The Miz, um, he's been on SmackDown for quite a while, um, but now he's back on the Raw brand, and uh, yeah, he's currently portraying a babyface, but whether he's a babyface or a heel, I think he's going to be a success on the Raw brand. Now, this is one that uh, um, took a lot of people by surprise, and it's the War Raiders, current NXT Tag Team Champions being called up um, after successfully defending their championships at NXT TakeOver New York against Ricochet and Black, Alistair Black. and uh, But they, they come up with a, with a new name, so Vince McMahon doesn't like the word war, negative uh, connotations there, obviously. Um, when they first came up to NXT, they were called War Machine. Um, that was quickly changed to War Raiders, and now they are the Viking Experience, which sounds like um, something you'd find in a in a in a theme park. Um, you know, uh, they 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 they've had individual name changes as well. So they're no longer Hanson Rowe. They are now Eric and Ivar or Ivar. Um, Yes, Eric the Viking, uh, Ivar the Viking. The Viking experience doesn't really, you know, I, I think one positive to come out of all of this is, or two positives, they're up on the main roster, which is fantastic, and they're portraying heels. Um, so I think that that's a much more suited role for these two. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get over the name changes. Hopefully in six months' time, we won't think anything of it, and there'll be, you know, Raw tag team champions and uh, doing what they do best in the ring, but at the moment it's certainly um, probably one of the biggest talking points um, out there, and uh, yeah, not gone over well with the fans. You've got uh, Andrade, uh, former Andrade Cien Almas, of course. Andrade, um, who suffered a, a name change um, not long ago, he's been called up to Raw now. I think he's going to be a great addition to Raw. Him and Zelina Vega uh, make a, a fantastic. Um, a fantastic couple, um, and uh, I th- I see bright things for Andrade in the future. And to be honest with you, the next pay per view, which is Money in the Bank, May nineteenth, um, I've got him pegged as uh, winning the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase on that show. So I think that this is kind of the start of good things for Andrade. Um, so uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing good things from him there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that he um, pinned Finn Balor on Monday Night Raw, the current Intercontinental Champion. Um, So uh, we'll talk more about Finn Balor in a minute, but a promising start for Andrade and uh, being on Monday Night Raw. Rey Mysterio um, and the Usos have made the move from SmackDown to to Raw. Uh, Same for Naomi. Um, EC3, who's probably had the worst main roster debut of anybody I can remember um, in a long, long time, if not forever, um, has been announced as a permanent Raw member, uh, member of the Raw roster. Maybe they'll give him a bit more to do and a bit more prominence and maybe a couple of wins and uh, let him kind of uh, get a little bit of shine. Um, But um, yeah, 
at the moment it's been pretty dreadful for EC3. Lacey Evans um, is a now a permanent member of the Raw roster and uh, she appears to be feuding with um, Becky Two Belts, uh, Becky Lynch and uh, I like Lacey Evans, I think she's got a great look, a really good character, uh, fantastic charisma, um, I love her gimmick and I think she's okay in the ring, she uh, was okay in NXT and uh, she's still developing but I think she's going to deliver in the ring uh, when it comes to her actually performing more regularly um, in front of an audience. So I look forward to kind of big things from Lacey Evans. And uh, yes, you might laugh at me for saying that, but I think that uh, the package of Lacey Evans is a good one. And I think that, uh, yeah, she's going to be feuding with Becky Lynch, which is going to be, uh, you know, a good transition for Becky Lynch to be uh, wrestling um, somebody new, somebody fresh, getting her outside of the programme um, of uh, Charlotte and Ronda Rousey, which has been, uh, you know, a long programme, and to have her going up against somebody fresh, somebody new, like Lacey Evans, um, is, is a good transition as far as I'm concerned. Eric Young. So... It looks like Sanity are no more. Um, Alexander Wolf has also requested his release. We're going to be talking more about the releases um, in the Wrestling Experience, episode one on YouTube, which will go out on Saturday. But uh, Eric Young, no sign of Killian Dane in this list at the moment, but uh, Eric Young is now a member of the Raw roster. Same for Cedric Alexander, so the uh, former um, Cruiserweight champion, and a uh, former um, member of the 205 Live roster has been promoted up to the main roster and good for him. I think he's an exceptional talent. Not great on the mic and not amazing personality-wise, um, but I think he could surprise quite a few people with what he's capable of in the ring. He's an excellent performer. Um, maybe he needs a mouthpiece. Maybe he needs a Leo Rush or somebody like that. I don't know. Um, I hope it's not going to be another Apollo or Apollo Cruise, where you know he looks great, can perform fantastic in the ring, uh, but can't do anything on the mic. Um, but I'm pleased for Cedric and it's good to see some 205 Live talent getting um, a bit of a look in on the main roster. And he's one that definitely deserves it. Like Mustafa Ali when he got called up at the back end of last year to the SmackDown roster. It's nice to see um, some 205 talent um, getting kind of elevated beyond 205 Live. Then you look at uh, SmackDown. So I mentioned about Phil and Bala. Um, I'm not mistaken in, in thinking that he, he's wrestled uh, twice this week, but he was on Raw on Monday, but now he is a uh, SmackDown roster member. Um, so uh, we've got a, a mid-card champion um Finn Balor, the Intercontinental Champion, on SmackDown. So uh, what does that mean for Samoa Joe in the United States Championship? By all accounts, Samoa Joe uh, is under the weather at the moment, um, and uh, he is going to be um, defending his United States Championship on Raw um, going forward. So from uh, next week on Raw, you'll probably see Samoa Joe as part of the, the call-up, the shake-up on Raw so that we got uh, um, each of the mid-card level bouts being defended on separate brands. Um, Elias has been moved on to SmackDown, um, and he had a prominent role on this week's SmackDown Live, being called out uh, um, as, as kind of like one of the, the, the main uh, members of the roster shakeup on the SmackDown brand. Uh, Bailey, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's been moved over from Raw to SmackDown. Ember Moon, so we saw her return as part of the Women's Battle Royal at WrestleMania. Great to see her fit and well. Um, a lot of people are big fans of Ember Moon, myself included, and think that uh, she's capable of some really, really great stuff. And I think that uh, she's going to be one to look out for. I think 2019 could be her year. Uh, Kyrie Sane's been called up from NXT, um, and she's been uh, paired up with Asuka. Uh, no tag team name yet, but they have been uh, uh, kind of saddled with uh, Paige, for want of a, a better term there, as uh, her manager, so that's Kyrie Sane and Asuka on the SmackDown brand. Lars Sullivan um, has been kind of uh, AWOL for a number of months after uh, initially being rumoured to make uh, his call up at the beginning of 2019. Um, he has been kind of seen on both brands recently, but now apparently he's a permanent member of the SmackDown brand. Um, Liv Morgan um, is uh, no longer part of the Riot Squad, and it looks like uh, Liv Morgan 
um, and uh, uh, the rest of the Riot Squad are, are going their own separate ways and Liv Morgan is now on Smackdown uh, Chad Gable is on Smackdown as well now so does that mean an end to his tag team with Bobby Roode? Possibly so and if so that could be a good thing for Chad Gable. And now he's had a bit of prominence um, on the Raw brand uh, as, as part of the tag team with Bobby Roode um, and uh, former Raw tag team champions as well. Um, and they've had some really good matches. I remember the, the match at Fastlane um, when the Revival were defending their tag team championships against Roode and Gable, um, against um, the Revival and, um, and Black and Ricochet, um, an awesome match there. Um, one of the best matches on the Fastlane card back in March. But it will be nice to see if Chad Gable is given an opportunity off the back of what he's proven um, with his uh, tag team partner, Bobby Roode. No sign of Bobby Roode in the uh, kind of roster shake-up at the moment. Uh, but it'll be good to see if Chad Gable's given, being given an opportunity as a single star on the SmackDown brand. Apollo Crews, I mentioned him earlier, um, Great talent, great look, lacking charisma, and I think that's what's held him back. Uh, Mickey James um, is also part of the SmackDown roster. The same for Heavy Machinery, Otis, and Tucker. So, some interesting developments there. Uh, one name that I did uh, leave out on purpose is uh, Roman Reigns. So, Roman Reigns has always been synonymous with being um, on the Raw brand, former WWE champion and Universal champion. And uh, part of the, the legendary S.H.I.E.L.D. faction um, has been moved on to SmackDown. So I don't think he's been part of SmackDown for a while. Certainly not in any kind of prominent role. Uh, but here he is. You see the likes of AJ Styles going up onto Raw. And Roman Reigns go, uh, going on to SmackDown. Now, come the autumn and come October when the Fox deal kicks in. And SmackDown is on uh, Fox Sports. Um, you know... Smackdown will probably be, uh, you know, in terms of importance, um, as important to the WWE management team, if not even more important than Monday Night Raw. Uh, so the big stars, you know, I'm expecting the likes of Ronda Rousey to be on Smackdown come the, you know, come October. Um, you, you might well see Brock Lesnar on Smackdown uh, come. Uh, October, so they've got that more um, high-profile, more high-profile names, and that more kind of legitimate sporting um, kind of uh, sporting presence, I suppose. Uh, they want a more kind of realistic sporting edge to the SmackDown product when Fox Sports takes over in October, um, and having some of the bigger names um, on SmackDown will definitely um, help out. One other name that I missed out that's moved up onto the SmackDown roster, I mentioned earlier about Cedric Alexander getting a bit of, pr of promotion from 205 Live to Monday Night Raw. Well, the same goes for um, former Cruiserweight champion Buddy Murphy, who has uh, got uh, promotion from 205 Live up to SmackDown. And I'm so pleased with Buddy Murphy. I think he's been one of the kind of um, standout, one of the, the best up-and-coming talents um, in all of the WWE for the last year, maybe two. Um, and uh, since he first came up onto 205 Live, remember he was part of the, the tag team, um, on NXT, former NXT champions with uh, Wesley Blake when they were managed by Alexa Bliss back on NXT and they were an outstanding tag team. Then we didn't see much from either of them, uh, e either Blake or Murphy, and then Buddy Murphy came up onto 205 Live, had uh, an outstanding feud with uh, uh, Cedric Alexander, had an outstanding feud with Mustafa Ali. Uh, Buddy Murphy won the Cruiserweight Championships at the uh, kind of showdown um, in uh, in Australia, uh, that was in Sydney, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was in Sydney, and uh, where he kind of won the cruiserweight championship in front of his home crowd. He's he's uh, on on home turf. He was an outstanding cruiserweight champion. Um, he's got a an amazing style. Um, uh, you know, power moves, high flying moves, um, very very innovative in the ring. An exceptional talent. Lost the cruiserweight championship, of course, at WrestleMania uh, to. Tony Nese, which was a bit of a surprising outcome, but I think he's going to be an outstanding addition to the SmackDown roster. Let's have a look at uh, NXT UK from uh, last night. 
um, and it was filmed um, at Access over WrestleMania weekend, um, where they filmed the next three weeks, including this one uh, of NXT UK. The first match was uh, Joe and Mark Coffey Gallus versus Raul Mendoza and Humberto Carrillo. So there was plenty of high flying action from Mendoza and Carrillo, uh, Carrillo against Mark and Joe Coffey in this match. Uh, Carrillo and Mendoza very nearly had the match won after a moonsault and a uh, 450 combo from the two uh, Latinos. An excellent uh, partnership uh, they're making the ring. Um, however, the end of the match came after just five minutes with a huge best for the bells lariat from Joe Coffey, uh, proving that uh, the Coffey brothers are dominant or continue to be dominant um, on the NXT UK brand. Walter and Pete Dunn, um, it's, it's been announced that there's going to be a rematch for the NXT, sorry, the WWE UK Championship taking place this coming Friday when uh, they film the next set of NXT UK tapings in Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, we won't get to see that match for a number of weeks until it is aired on an episode of NXT UK on the WWE Network. However, um, they, they, you know, they're almost certainly going to dedicate that entire episode to that match alone as that match will truly be awesome and I can't wait to see. For those of you that saw the match between Pete Dunne and Walter at the NXT TakeOver New York um, a couple of Fridays ago um, you wouldn't have been disappointed. One of the best matches um, over the entire WrestleMania weekend and I think that their rematch is certainly going to deliver but one interesting thing that happened um, you know, during that little segment uh, was a bit of a face-off between Jordan Devlin and Walter, and of course Jordan Devlin and Walter have had their confrontations um, on the independent circuit, certainly for OTT in Ireland, where Jordan Devlin Jordan Devlin recently won back the OTT championship uh, in a match against Walter a few weeks back, and Walter, of course, uh, was uh, won the. Uh, OTT Championship against Jordan Devlin back in 2018. Um, so uh, although their rivalry in OTT hasn't been mentioned yet, um, I think that uh, uh, these two will face off. I think Jordan Devlin will face off against Walter somewhere down the line. I don't know whether it's recorded at Access, in which case if it was, we'll see it in the next few weeks. Uh, but when they do face off, I think it's going to be outstanding. You all know what a massive fan I am of Jordan Devlin and Walter. Then we saw a match between the finest, Kona Reeves, uh, making his NXT UK debut against the Bomber, Dave Mastis. So, so another impressive win here for the Bomber, um, having no real issue uh, with the, the NXT's finest and putting him away. Uh, Mastiff finishing the match off after only four minutes uh, with his um, Into the Void running cannibal for the quick pinfall victory. Then there's a backstage promo from Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews sending out a message to uh, former NXT Tag Team Champions Mustache Mountain, Tyler Bates and Trent Seven setting up another match um, that took place over WrestleMania weekend um, at Access and a match that we will likely to see on, uh, I believe it's uh, airing on next week's episode of NXT UK. So that'll be an amazing match and two babyface teams. Then we get a match between Casey Catanzaro versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, so, of course, these two first met on an episode of... Um, uh, on, I think it was the second round of the May Young Classic back in 2018. So, last year's May Young Classic. And it was a very entertaining match, obviously, between Rhea Ripley, the, the more powerful, stronger, um, you know, more um, aggressive competitor against Casey Catanzaro, who is the much smaller, much more athletic um kind of, I suppose you could say, lightweight of the women's division. Uh, Rhea Ripley is uh, virtually twice the size of Casey, and that was a, a fun match in the May Young Classic. And they had the, a little bit of a confrontation at this year's Royal Rumble as well. Um, Rhea Ripley, of course, is the first of NXT UK Women's Champion. Um, but uh, in this match, there was uh, some... Um, amazing athletic agility shown from Casey Catanzaro of course in the early going with uh, one of the high spots of the match uh, handstand on the top rope before executing an impressive head scissors taking uh, the bigger rear Ripley down to the canvas Catanzaro turned a delayed suplex um, into a roll up for a two count uh, but Ripley made short work of Catanzaro it was only a three minute match she won with her very impressive Riptide finisher. And after the match, uh, Ripley came back into the ring uh, to slap on her inverted cloverleaf onto Catanzaro. Um, I couldn't be any more impressed with Rhea Ripley. And I'm going to be doing a feature on next week's podcast looking at uh, uh, the, the, 
kind of bit of trying to rank the women, uh, the NXT UK women's talent, and trying to kind of have a look at uh, you know where they line up, who I think is you know the top five. Uh, I might extend it into the kind of the top ten. Um, NXT UK women's talent and uh, kind of see who who uh, you know gets into the top five or who is the number one but uh, I'm quite high on Rhea Ripley as is many for her her character her gimmick her personality in the ring her brutality um, in her wrestling style and the way that she dominated uh, Casey Catanzaro here uh, was uh, impressive as always um, I've got to say, uh, I'm also a fan of Casey Catanzaro, and I think that uh, she'll definitely be a big star in the future, but it wasn't to be on this occasion. Uh, but uh, Ripley um, wasn't finished there as she confronts uh, Casey Catanzaro backstage in a backstage segment, only to be approached by new arrival in the NXT UK women's division, Piper Niven, formerly Viper on the UK independent circuit, um, who will no doubt be Ripley's next opponent. Um, then we see a match between the grizzled young veterans, James Drake and Zach Gibson, going up against Amir Jordan and Kenny Williams. And the grizzled young veterans are putting their NXT UK tag team titles on the line here. Um, so the NXT tag team champions, the grizzled young veterans, do a bit of an in-ring promo ahead of their match with Jordan and Williams. Uh, Got to say, very impressed with the tag team offense from Drake and Gibson in this match. Plenty of quick tags from the grizzled young veterans. Uh, Gibson was uh, calling this an exhibition match during the during the match, uh, which. Uh, it demonstrates that he might not have been taking the match or his opponents as seriously as maybe he should. However, the match was surprisingly won by Williams and Jordan uh, by countout, setting up a rematch that will almost certainly take place uh, in Glasgow at the next set of tapings this coming weekend. Then we get an interview from Pete Dunne saying how uh, the, the title, the WWE UK title, was an extension of him. He was, of course, the WWE UK champion for 685 days. He said that uh, he was taken to the limit from Walter at uh, TakeOver New York, and he knows what is required to beat Walter in the future. Pete Dunne tells Walter to give him his rematch, and I'm sure that we will see it very soon. And, of course, it's already been announced that Pete Dunne and Walter will be going up against one another, where Walter will be the champion defending his title against Pete Dunne at the next set of tapings this coming weekend. Looking at this week's episode of NXT from Full Sail, so this was uh, the first of the recordings post WrestleMania and post Takeover New York. And the first match I mentioned, uh, Buddy Murphy earlier, but he's going up against Velveteen Dream for the NXT North American Championship. So they had a little bit of a kind of a, a confrontation, a bit of a spat. Backstage, after Woody Murphy lost his championship to Tony Nese, backstage at WrestleMania, which was captured um, whilst Velveteen Dream was doing a selfie. Uh, the Velveteen Dream looks absolutely splendid here with his uh, North American championship. Uh, Buddy Murphy was, of course, a uh, former WWE Cruiserweight Champion, as I mentioned, lost to Tony Nese at WrestleMania, and I'm massively excited by both of these two wrestlers. These two, along with uh, Matt Riddle, uh, in my books, could be considered some of the hottest prospects for the future in the WWE. Uh, Murphy takes the match into another gear uh, with a fantastic somersault plancher onto Dream on the outside, followed by a Meteora, which gets a close two count for Buddy Murphy. Tons of fast-paced action, as you would expect from these two. Dream nails Murphy with a huge double axe handle from the top turnbuckle onto Murphy on the outside before getting a two-count from a code breaker. And in one dramatic spot, both, uh, both wrestlers battle it out on the top turnbuckle before simultaneously topping to the floor, toppling to the floor on the outside. Dream gets a two count after countering a top rope sunset flip into a Dream Valley driver, and that was a very close near fall for Dream. Murphy hits a cheeky Nando's kick on Dream before smashing the Velveteen Dream with a running powerbomb for another two count. There's a running, uh, leaping knee strike on the ring apron, sending the Velveteen Dream to the floor on the outside. Uh, but the Velveteen Dream finally 
puts this epic match to bed with a Famouser, followed by a Dream Valley Driver, and then his Purple Rainmaker for the pinfall victory after only 13 minutes. So an excellent match between these two. I wouldn't mind seeing these two wrestle um, every day for the next year if I had the chance to. Absolutely love this match. Thought that Buddy Murphy looked fantastic in his return in front of the full sailed crowd, um, and Velveteen Dream equally delivered as the North American champion in this wonderful match. So uh, once again, this was an excellent match kick off to kick off this week's NXT, and I uh, can't say enough good things about these two and about this match. Um, you have to go out of your way to check this match out if you haven't done so already. In the next segment, we see the Street Profits walking the corridors of Full Sail, about to knock on uh, General Manager William Regal's door when current tag team champions, the War Raiders, um, sorry, uh, the Viking Experience, exit Regal's office to say that they will be seeing them in the ring um, in a match for the NXT Tag Team Championships next week. So there you have it. Uh, the Viking Experience will be going up against the Street Profits um, for the NXT Tag Team Championships next week. Um, right here on, on, on NXT and it will be covered um, on Wrestling With Jonas. Then we see the new NXT champion Johnny Gargano is a great ovation and a huge Johnny Champion chart for, for the new NXT champion and he enters the ring um, in his new kind of yellow Johnny Champion t-shirt Johnny says that how four years ago he was told no um, on his NXT tryout and this is what happens when you do not take no for an answer this was a long journey, but he stands here proudly, finally, as Johnny Champion. He says that NXT TakeOver New York was his toughest match of his career. And just then, Adam Cole comes out to stop Johnny's uh, love fest with uh, the uh, Full Sail faithful. Adam says that uh, if, if this was any other match, he would be standing here as NXT Champion. Adam Cole says that uh, he is the uncrowned NXT champion and Johnny is nothing more than a punk. Johnny gets back on the mic to ask if uh, uh, there is trouble in his little little boy band. He compares him to NSYNC, which is a very 90s reference. And Johnny says that uh, Adam Cole did beat him in the first fall only, uh, but Johnny did get the second and the third fall. And that's not just definitive, that's undisputed. Johnny then gets attacked from behind by Roderick Strong before... Um, before all the other members of the Undisputed Era enter the ring to beat down the new champion before Cole hits a super kick to the chin of Gargano bringing an end to that um, intense promo segment uh, between Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole and the rest of the Undisputed Era. Then we see a clip of the uh, signing of Kushida, former New Japan Pro Wrestler um, and former um, junior heavyweight champion, of course, who we saw in the front row at TakeOver New York um, over WrestleMania weekend. Kushida will be making his NXT debut in just two weeks' time. And then we see a match between Aaron Fry and Dominic Dijakovic. This match went less than 10 seconds, um, and uh, it all it took was a big boot from um, the big Croatian Dominic Dijakovic uh, to flatten his opponent before covering for the easy pinfall victory. Uh, Dominic then grabs a microphone to send out a challenge towards the Velveteen Dream and to, uh, towards the NXT North American Championship. William Regal then uh, interjects in a backstage interview with Adam Cole and the rest of the Undisputed Era to say that Johnny will be defending his championship next week on NXT, but not against Adam Cole, oh no, um, but against Roderick Strong. Cole looks confused and a bit dejected at this news, possibly causing some extra tension or dissension in the ranks between the Undisputed Era. Uh, this is an interesting development which could lead to a split within the group. We shall have to see. However, next week we will see Johnny Gargano defend his NXT Championship for the first time against Roderick Strong. And then we get the main event, Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane, and it's going to be for Shayna's NXT Women's Championship. So uh, th th there's, there's a stipulation here where if Kyrie Sane fails to win the match against Baszler, then she cannot go for the NXT Women's Championship ever again. This is her last ever opportunity if she wins it or there's no more opportunities. And of course, Kairi Sane is a former NXT Women's Champion. Now, these two have had one of the most uh, lengthy and heated rivalries in the history of NXT, starting at the first ever May Young Classic back in 2017, when Kairi Sane won that tournament, beating Shayna Baszler in the final, along with various NXT TakeOver matches between the two, including NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, TakeOver War Games, even WWE Evolution in October of last year, and more recently, TakeOver New York in that four-way match where 
Kairi Sane, Shayna Baszler, uh, Io Shirai and Bianca Belair went up against each other uh, for the Women's Championship in that four-way. Kyrie is definitely the aggressor in the first few minutes with her anchor submission hold and an insane elbow on the six-minute mark to get an early two count. Kyrie Sane goes for a running kabuki elbow off the ring apron only to find steel ring barrier at ringside. Shane then goes to work on Kyrie's injured elbow, including what appeared to be a key lock. Uh, medical staff come out to check on Kyrie to see if she's okay, as well as her best friend Io Shirai, who factors into the end of the match when she enters the ring, tackling Baszler to the ground to put a stop to the NXT champion, stomping on her uh, opponent or Io's best friend's already injured elbow. Io's interference caused an end to the match due to disqualification. However, Baszler's dastardly stable mates, Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke, pull Io to the outside to hold her back while Shayna Baszler finally delivers that wicked stomp to the uh, elbow of uh, Kairi Sane, leaving her in agony in the centre of the ring while her best friend looks on helplessly on the outside. The... Uh, this episode of NXT comes to an end with Io Shirai in the ring looking after her best friend, Kairi Sane, looking um, kind of upset and angry towards Shayna Baszler. And I think we all know that Io Shirai is going to be the next number one contender to Shayna's belt. Um, and that will be an amazing match when that happens. So that was uh, an excellent match that uh, appeared to be Kyrie Sane's last ever match on the NXT roster before being called up onto the main roster full time. And as we discussed earlier, as I mentioned earlier, she has now been teamed up with Asuka on the blue brand on SmackDown with former WWE Divas champion Paige as their manager mouthpiece going forward. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Wrestling with Jonas. That's pretty much all we have for this week. That's been episode 37. If you did enjoy this episode, please don't forget to hit subscribe, to hit like, uh, to share, and to shout about this podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family, and keep listening to Wrestling with Jonas for all of your weekly NXT, NXT UK, WWE updates. Um, you can listen to Wrestling with Jonas on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, Anchor, and even YouTube. And uh, wherever you get your podcasts, you can hear Wrestling with Jonas. And don't forget to listen to the first ever episode of The Wrestling Experience, which will debut on YouTube on Saturday afternoon UK time. If you have any questions and want to get in touch with the show, you can just simply email wrestlingwithjonas at gmail.com. You can get in touch via our Twitter page. Uh, just simply get in touch at with Jonas underscore pod. You can get in touch with us on uh, Instagram at Wrestling with Jonas. And you can reach out to us on Facebook. We have a really interactive, fun Facebook group. Um, and you can just search Wrestling with Jonas and ask to be part of that group. I'll be back later on this week with another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. And don't forget to listen to episode one of the Wrestling Experience on YouTube. But in the meantime, take care and speak to you all soon.